dudes brushes what's up what's happening this is trent and uh today i want to talk to you about how to create custom brushes and custom brush uh, palettes in your uh, sketchbook pro so let's do it uh first up we want to scroll through here you'll notice if you click on these handy little buttons here you get uh, a couple of different windows pop up this one here is your brush library and that basically contains all of your all of your brushes that you have currently loaded. Now, Sketchbook Pro does a pretty good job of updating their brushes and allowing you to download new brush sets all the time, but let's say that we wanted to create our own uh, brush library. Let's say we wanted to make our own set of custom brushes. Uh, I'll go a little bit into how to create custom brushes, how to modify some brushes. And this isn't going to be super thorough because there's so much here to cover and I don't want to do like three hour videos just on brushes. So um, first thing we want to do is uh, when we're looking at the brush library here, uh, you know, you can move around uh, any of your palettes uh, or the windows of your brush sets that you've created um, and you can adjust them. You can move them around into any order that you'd like. You could delete them if you wanted to. Uh, by pressing on this and holding it down, you get a few different options for exporting your brush sets or importing any new brush sets if you were to like download them from your favorite artist's Gumroad uh, sets or something like that. Uh, you can copy brushes or create new brushes. So. In this particular set, I've got a couple of them that I've dragged over from some of my favorites from the sort of basic set that it came with. But today we're gonna actually, I'm, I'm gonna build my own custom brush set of some of the favorite ones that I use. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do that. And you can uh, kind of go along for the ride and uh, make some of the brushes the way that you wanna make them as well. Uh, a couple of the ones that I've made already are this one here, which is a a modification of something of, of one of the airbrush uh, brushes and it's kind of most similar to a brush that I used in Photoshop for a long time and it really just uh, kind of sets the opacity to pressure sensitivity but it has a nice uh, brush texture to it. Uh, the next one, you've, if you've watched my chain brush demo, you'll recognize this one. It allows you to make uh, chains with one swoosh so whoosh. Uh, those are the only two in here that I've created, but uh, we're gonna make a couple more of them here today. But first things first, the thing that you should know is if you want to drag any of the existing brushes into your own set, like so for instance, I really like the glow brush. I'm gonna drag that into my set. I'm gonna drag it up here to the top of the window. It scrolls up and I'm gonna just gonna place it into the spot where I want it to be. And now it's, it'll forever be in my own brush set. If you wanted to create a new one, a new brush set, for instance, you could actually go here and say, new brush set at the very top. That creates this section here. We'll call these trans brushes, baby. Yeah, and uh, just hit enter. And then we'll drag in the brushes that we know we want to use. I use this one a lot, so I'm going to keep that one. Um, I also really like to use the airbrush, so I'm going to drag that one in. Uh, I use, of course, I'm going to drag in my favorites that I created. I'm going to put those right in the front. And also, I really like this chalk brush. This is pretty much a standard chalk brush. We might modify that though. Yeah, because it's a little too noisy. And then we can drag this whole thing up by selecting that, dragging it up to the top. But bam, trans brushes at the top. So now if we wanted to, we could condense this down, unless if we wanted to dig through and pull any other brushes into that category. So let's start with the, the pencil brush. Firstly, I don't see a lot wrong with this one. It's got good pressure sensitivity. It's set to scale. I think maybe one of the things that I'd like to do though is to be able to get smaller with it when, it's, when I'm barely pressing and bigger with it when I'm pressing harder on the stylus. So the size with light pressure, I wanna drag that down so that it comes to a finer point. You'll notice it's a very tiny little line down there. But the harder I press, the bigger that line gets. 
And all this is done, of course, with a Wacom Intuos Pro. I use the medium size that you can get from the Wacom website. Now, I don't want to mess too much with the opacity with heavy pressure. Um, heavy pressure just means like you're pressing all the way down. Uh, light pressure is if it's if you're barely pressing down. And I kind of like that this one has a little bit lighter opacity when you're doing these thinner lines, because if I wanted something that was harder edged, I already have this this brush, which is a this is a straight up pencil brush but it doesn't really go very large. So that's the only limitation of that. It's more, more for details, but because I like it, I'm gonna add it back up here into the Trent's brushes set. But after the chalk brush, okay. Now here in the edge, you'll notice that you can adjust the sharpness of it. And you'll notice the difference when you go to fully sharp. Those edges on that, when I go full pressure, those edges are hard. It is nice and crisp and clean, especially at a high resolution. If I drop that down to a very soft edge, you'll notice it gets very fuzzy around those edges. It depends on really what you want to get. Me personally, I like a moderately clean. I've been trying to get a little bit softer and fuzzier with my images. So and it's one of the things I like about Sketchbook Pro. So I'm going to set that at about 85. And here you could actually create a new shape for it if you wanted to. Um, just for the safe, sake of experimentation, Let's go ahead and create a copy of that. So we've got our brush selected that we want to modify. We create a copy of it. And then we go over here to, let's say, let's create a shape. Let's say that we want it to be like an X. So after we've drawn in the shape that we want to capture as our brush shape, we simply go down here, we scroll down to the, uh, the section titled uh, nib and then we click on capture. Now we could just import a shape if we wanted to. So you can use photos as brushes if you have them as separate images. But for now, let's capture it. And it kind of creates a little marquee. We want to make sure that all of our image is in there and then just click on it. Now what that's done is it's now using that X as the shape of the brush. Now a few other factors are at play here, for instance, You've got the rotation, you've got the scaling percentage, you have the spacing. Let's say that we set the spacing to a lot further apart. You'll notice that you can see those X's a lot more. That's not actually what we want though. As you can see, you can get some very interesting brush shapes out of this and very interesting textures as well. So this kind of creates like a, this would be good for painting trees, for instance. You get like some leafy kind of shapes. I think I'm gonna keep this one as a leaf brush for when I wanna paint trees. So just so that we don't get confused with the other icon, we wanna actually change it out here. So we would kind of go over back over to the brush properties, click on the, um, icon here and we want to use the shape as the icon so that we can remember and it'll it'll use that X that we had we could do that or we could actually if we wanted to we could import it if we had our own icons or we could use uh, reset it to the default but in this case I think this is this is fine I think we'll we won't necessarily easily remember that but if we get used to using it it'll be it'll be good enough So let's paint a quick tree with our new tree brush. And that's a lot faster than going in and trying to paint in every leaf, right? And then switch over to a different brush for our tree limb. And there you go. That's a pretty fast way to make ourselves a tree. 
Now another brush that we might want to do, we might need, is something like a grass brush. So let's go ahead and create a grass brush. Now first thing we want to do, you remember, we want to create a duplicate of a brush that's pretty similar to what we want to use. I want to go down to advanced. Well, first things first, we probably want to draw out at least one clump of grass. Something similar to the kind of a look that we want to get. And then we want to capture that shape. Now this one, we, we are quite certain that we don't want the rotation dynamics functioning because right now if we draw with it, it just kind of looks like a big fuzzy mess. But more, more than anything, what's happening here is that we have in the randomness section, it's actually set to rotation randomness with a 99.1 uh, a setting. So we want to switch that down to zero. So that way when we draw, it's always going to be at the same angle. It won't rotate. The sizing, let's kind of get rid of the randomness and the sizing and the spacing randomness too. We know what we want to do here and it doesn't need to be that random. So then we go to uh, the spacing. We want to make the spacing a lot tighter. Maybe we do want some randomness in the spacing actually. That might be too much though. Let's go back up here to the spacing, make it a bit tighter. Cause we want to get some like clumps here. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So one brush stroke kind of gives us a lot of little grass clumps. So that's a pretty useful tool too. Now we can select any color and paint with that if we wanted to, to cut into it. And of course we want to go back up to here so that we remember what it is that this brush does and we want to use the shape as the icon. There you go. That'll be pretty easy to remember. Now the next thing we want to do is, of course, we've got some nice new additions, uh, some of our custom brushes here. So we want to export our brush set if we wanted to, if we wanted to save it. Uh, we could export this brush set. Trans brushes. We'll just put that in my May painting for Sketchbook Pro. Could go into any folder that you want and that way you can reload it if you if you ever lose it so if you make any changes to your brush palette you might want to be able to uh, you might want to save it out so that you can go back and pull it back up whenever you need it so that's a couple of tips on uh, creating custom brushes i hope that this helped you uh, if you're interested in more sketchbook pro tutorials or just general art tips i do a lot of videos here on my youtube channel so please subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video all right ciao